in their press release for iGenius, they refer to iGenius as being a new brand, despite the fact that it is simply the same brand under a new name. Hello, hello, hello. We are back together again. We are here today. Day. Finally, we're back. So a new background again. Yes, I have big plans for this wall. I mean, I don't know what those plans are, but it's, I'm going to do something over there. Between the last time I uploaded and today I did get a new job. So I had to do some revamping up here, but uh, I think that resulted in a much better setup than I had like the last time I recorded. But enough about me. Today is about iGenius. Sort of, kind of, kind of, sort of, a little bit. Let me explain how we got from the last video to here. If you didn't watch my last video, totally fine. You might want to tune in to like the last 10 minutes. I just kind of go over this theory and idea that iGenius is potentially running pump and dump schemes and potentially running exit scams. At the time of that recording, it was very circumstantial. I didn't really elaborate much more. There were just some red flags I was picking up on with iGenius and it just felt like something wasn't right. I had a pretty good response to that theory. So I was like, okay, let's expand on it. The research really did start with that Reddit post I had shared at the end of the video. And in reacting to that Reddit post, I was like, wow, they're so shady. It doesn't get much worse than this. But now that I've actually looked into iGenius and InvestView, who owns iGenius, within an hour of looking into iGenius and InvestView, it became clear that InvestView exists solely to run scams allegedly. On that note, I do want to put up a disclaimer. I know that I never do disclaimers, but because I am making some serious accusations, some serious assumptions, I I just, I, I want to protect my butt as much as I can. So yeah, this is my opinion. Um, Everyone mentioned in this video, every entity is innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. As such, I am not their judge and jury. We are not their judge and jury. Uh, so don't harass anyone in this video. Yeah. That's about it. The last thing I want to do before I actually get into it is I do want to speak directly to anyone that is an iGenius, anyone that has invested in anything that InvestView owns or InvestView is partnered with. If there's one thing you hear from this video, it's it's to get out. It is to sell your crypto, leave iGenius, get your money back in any way you can, because regardless of whether or not InvestView is allegedly scamming people, the result of any company that InvestU has owned has not been good. I also suspect that those of you who are in iGenius or again, use any tools that might be provided by InvestView, I highly suspect you are being encouraged, maybe even bribed to make a large investment and then hold it for three years, five years, seven years, etc. I don't know how you can get your money back through that sort of investment, but if you can, try to get it out because there is a reason they want you to hold onto that investment and there is a reason they are making it so difficult for you to pull your money out. And that's all I'm going to say. I feel like if you are in iGenius or InvestView, you might get a couple minutes into this video and tune out and I just want you to hear that. Like, I just, I need you to hear that. Okay. Let's carry on. Early on in my research, I really discovered that InvestView seemed to be the root of all of this, everything that I found. What became frustrating early on was that I really wanted to detail everything that InvestView has done. I wanted to talk about all the scams, every scam, all of it. I wanted to talk about all of it. But what I found with InvestView is that there's no rabbit hole to go down. A rabbit hole implies you're just going deeper and deeper and you're falling and blah, 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 blah. But this is not a rabbit hole. This is like, it's like a very complex ant tunnel. You don't know which way to go. You don't remember how you even came in to begin with. And then as you're going in, you're like, wait, what am I doing here anyway? I don't know what my destination is. I could not keep up with the amount of 
fraud and scams and shady things that InvestView was doing. I would look up one company, which would lead me to another company, which might lead me to a partnership. And every single entity of that was like, not good. It was not good. I had to step back and reevaluate the way I really wanted to organize this video because if I did that, it would just be so unorganized and there would be so much I would have to define and go into and it would be, I feel like, confusing and maybe even a little convoluted. So yeah. For today's video, I am going to divide it up into four smallish categories that detail some red flags within InvestView. We are going to talk about InvestView as a publicly traded stock. We are going to talk about InvestView's history with MLMs. And of course, that'll include iGenius, but it's also going to include a couple that uh, preceded iGenius. We are also going to talk about their partnership with Endotech. And lastly, we are going to talk about some of the crypto scams that might be going on in InvestView and iGenius. Yeah. That being said, this video is barely going to scratch the surface of what InvestView is, what they've done. I mean, InvestView, believe it or not, has been around since 1946. Well, I'll talk about that in just a second. So yeah, just keep in mind that this is far from the bulk of what InvestView has done. Hello, editing turd girl one here. And if you couldn't tell from the title, I ended up breaking this video into two parts. There's two reasons for that. One is that it would be a two hour video if I didn't break it up into two parts. The second reason is that my computer no longer can handle DaVinci Resolve. Because my laptop could not handle it, it has taken such a long time for me to edit this video up until this part. And it's caused me a lot of stress. <laughs> My boyfriend is letting me use his computer to just sort of fine tune this first part. Um, but, you know, even on his computer, when I don't have access to my tools and my information and everything I need to edit, it just takes a long time and it's a big hassle. So thank you for understanding that you're getting just part one right now. So part one is just going to be about InvestView as a stock and its history with MLMs. In part two, we will talk about the relationship with Endotech and some of the scams that are going on with crypto. And that is where I'm going to talk a little bit deeper about how I think they are tricking people into holding their funds so that they can run continuous pump and dump schemes. And I think that's all I needed to say. I am going to record this video as if someone has never heard of crypto, as if someone has never heard of pump and dump scams or schemes. I am going to record this as if someone watching has no idea how any of this stuff works. So bear with me if I repeat certain definitions, if I kind of reiterate what I've just said a couple times, I'm trying to make this video as clear as possible. So let's open up quickly and talk about who InvestView is. In my last video, InvestView was named as the owners of iGenius. They own a couple other things as well. So it says InvestView delivers an ecosystem of leading edge financial technologies, tools, research, and services that drive innovation in blockchain, AI, DeFi, and global finance. You are going to hear words like decentralized, unregulated quite a bit in this video. I'm going to hesitate to say this, but for the sake of it being digestible, think of decentralized as almost being a synonym to unregulated. If we talk about a trading platform being decentralized, it really means that it's not being controlled by one certain entity in the way that major stock markets might be regulated. They do try to make it sound flashy, almost like unregulated and decentralized means sky's the limit, but it's it's honestly, I mean, it's, it's filled with red flags. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> On their website, they really want Want to try to make themselves appear as a very transparent company. They speak on transparency quite a bit. The SEC filings will be on the right. That stands for Securities and Exchange Commission. On the left, you have press releases. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then down the center, you
you have where they are at on the stock market. You have a little snippet of Endow. We're going to talk about Endow as well. On all of InvestView's press releases, they do sometimes make these statements that are like, we invested in this, so we foresee growth continuing because X, Y, Z. I will go over one particular press release later. At the end of all of their press releases, they do have this snippet about forward-looking statements, basically saying that stuff could happen and uh, we shouldn't take that as a matter of fact. Obviously, it's there to protect them, but it does, it feels like a cop-out. And I know that they're not the only ones that are going to have this kind of forward-looking statement on their press releases. But this kind of statement allows for any sort of investment company, any sort of business, any sort of cryptocurrency, what, what have you, it allows them to kind of say whatever they want. And I'm not okay with that. I wanted to give you a brief rundown of where InvestView has started and where they are now, I'm going to read this directly off of the 10Q form, but I am going to change my camera view right now because I want to be able to list everything on the left so that you can actually visually see it because I don't think you can really see it on in this paragraph. Look at that. I made a camera view that allows me to put up notes a little bit better. <laughs> this part is kind of wild, right? So it says InvestView Inc. was incorporated on January 30th, 1946 under the laws in the state of Utah as the Uintah Mountain Copper Company. On January 2005, the company changed domicile to Nevada and changed its name to Vox Path Holding Inc. In September of 2006, the company merged with the Retirement Solution Inc. through a share purchase agreement into Fox Path Holdings Inc. and then changed its name to the RetirementSolution.com Inc. In October 2008, the company changed its name to Global Investor Services Inc. before changing its name to InvestView on March 27, 2012. So yeah, lots of different names, providing different services and products, and that is strange. It's a little strange. And the last thing to mention about InvestView before we move on to it as a stock is that they had a CEO. His name was Joseph Camerata. He is no longer the CEO um, because something happened and... Yeah, he's just no longer the CEO. So I'm obviously not going to go all the way back to 1946. I can't do it. I cannot do it. I'm only going to go back to the time when they were global investor services. And this is the first red flag that I noticed with InvestView. In March of 2012, global investor services became InvestView. On April 9th, in a press release, they announced this name change. And they also announced that they had affected a reverse stock split. So what is a reverse stock split? Because I didn't know. I had no idea. So a reverse stock split is when a company combines all of its shares together, combines the total of the shares, and reduces the amount of shares available. It is usually paired with some sort of ratio. So like a 1 to 200 reverse stock split means that for every 200 shares, they will be combined to create one share. What this does then is it reduces the amount of shares available, but makes the shares that are available a little bit more valuable. To put this in a little bit more digestible of an example, let's say I had a company and there were a thousand shares and I imposed a one to 10 uh, reverse stock split. If I had 1000 shares and for every 10 shares, I would merge them and create one share. So I would go from 1000 shares to 100 shares. If before this reverse stock split, I had 1000 shares and the total value of all of it was 100,000, that means each share would be worth about $100. After the reverse stock split, where I am now decreasing the amount of shares available, each share now becomes $1,000. So to be clear, it does not change the actual worth of the total combined shares. My company would still be worth $100,000, but it changes the value of the share. Why would that be considered a bad thing? It's important to note that a reverse stock split is the opposite of a stock split. In a stock split, you're going to add more shares or you're going to divide up the shares a little bit more so that more shares are available. It is a good sign if a company does a stock split because what it means is that the company is doing so well that their shares are becoming inaccessible. They are 
too high in price so they can now reduce the price so that it becomes more affordable to everyone else. It's a very, very good sign. Naturally, being the opposite of a stock split, a reverse stock split is a, a bad sign and it is typically a sign of distress. While it may not change the overall value of all the total shares, it does increase the value of a single share, which may give the facade that a company is doing a little bit better than it is. So remember, this is still global investors. They are doing a change name to InvestView. But if we go back to that clip in my last video where I talk about someone from iGenius positioning themselves underneath InvestView, which is a publicly traded stock. Well, guys, we're actually owned by a publicly traded company. So you can see our financials. You can see what's going on behind closed doors. You can see the business and make an educated decision for yourself. So I mentioned in that video that it was super, super misleading. And this is exactly why it's misleading. So when Global Investors changed its name to InvestView and people go to look at the financials of invest view maybe a couple months later after the new name actually goes into effect they may see the value of the share and think wow that's not bad when in reality they have reduced the shares of course anyone can google and get the filings on that but i mean think about it who is really doing that except maybe very very serious investors i don't think necessarily the average person or someone in iGenius is necessarily going to do that sort of deep dive research. There are two more red flags I want to talk about InvestView in terms of it being a publicly traded stock. They're kind of related, but the first is that they are traded on an OTC market, OTC standing for over the counter. When we think of major stock exchanges, we think of, you know, if you're here in the United States, the New York Stock Exchange, um, NASDAQ, that's all I know. But anyway, those are like the major stock exchanges that we talk about. These are centralized markets that are regulated by commissions and uh, entities that make sure investors are protected. So knowing that major stock exchanges are centralized, wh what do you think uh, OTC markets are? Correct. They are decentralized. You got it. You knew exactly where we were going with this. They are decentralized markets. And that's going to be a major red flag. And let's talk about why. So the first red flag is exactly what I just said. It is unregulated and decentralized. Because it is unregulated and decentralized, there is going to be minimal to essentially no transparency um, in terms of providing fundamental information about the stock and the shares. And because of this, many of the stocks on OTC markets are subject to schemes and scams. Go figure. There are no minimum standards for a company to list their shares on an OTC market. So without there being minimum standards, it means that a company doesn't need to have a minimum amount of shares, which is what is needed on a major stock exchange or a centralized stock exchange. And it also means that each share does not have to have a minimum value, again, like it would on a centralized market. So this is going to lead me to my third red flag, and it is that InvestView or INVU as it is on the stock market is a penny stock. There is no like minimum value for a stock to be considered a penny stock, but typically the value is less than a dollar. Any company that has a share under a dollar, that's going to be a penny stock. Not all publicly traded companies on the OTC markets are penny stocks. However, if a company does have a penny stock, they are going to be on OTC markets. A little bit more about penny stocks. We already mentioned that their value is typically under a dollar per share, and usually their total market capital is under $250 million. Again, it's not necessarily a set definition, but that is typically how it is defined. Penny stocks can often feel desirable because it's like you can make an investment and not have to shell out a lot of money. I mean, that's that seems pretty cool. Unfortunately, the penny stock market is just, I, it's scam after scam after scam. So some of the scams that can occur on the penny stock market would be pump and dump schemes. We've talked about pump and dump schemes a couple times now. And uh, just to reiterate on the stock market, it is going to be when someone who maybe is invested in a stock already hypes it up, promotes it with the intention to dump the stock once the price inflates to a higher value. 
Other scams that you might find on the penny stock market would include short and distort schemes. This is going to be the opposite of a pump and dump scheme. We also have guru scams. This is going to be when someone kind of positions themselves as like an expert in investing in stock markets. It can be, of course, with crypto as well. You will position yourself as an expert on crypto. The last penny stock scam that can occur is a, a mining scam. Mining scams have been happening for a very long time, since pretty much forever, and it is in relation to mining in the way that we think of it traditionally, so not crypto mining. We're talking gold, silver, oil, um, the Uintah Mountain Copper Company. One of the examples I found was a company in the 90s called Briex. Their founder pretended that they had discovered a gold mine, which uh, as people heard that they had discovered a gold mine, they ended up investing in their stock. The shares uh, skyrocketed, of course, and it turns out that there was no gold mine to begin with. <laughs> So now you might ask me, turd girl one, do you have any evidence that InvestView has ever run any kind of scam with their stock? Or are you just saying stuff? <laughs> Here's the thing. Obviously the fact that it is on an over-the-counter market and obviously the fact that it is a penny stock, that is super alarming. Of course, the reverse stock split is also a red flag, but I do want to talk a moment about InvestView that happened about a year ago. Looking at this, do any of you see anything that might raise some red flags that maybe something weird happened? Anyone? Yes, 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 you did it again. You knew, you knew exactly where I was going. This peak right here on April 6, 2021. This peak is a little suspicious. You can see how incredibly sharp it rose to 73 cents, and then you can see how quickly it dropped. Um, and then you can also see that pretty much since that drop, it has continued to decline. So let's talk about what happened surrounding April 6, 2021. So just so we have a frame of reference, we're going to look uh, in between March 24th, 2021. So this is going to be the start of the climb. In about two weeks time, it's going to hit its all-time high of 73 cents. So that's on April 6th. On April 20th, 2021, this is where we're going to see the decline. It drops about 60% from that high of 73 cents. And also just as a refresher, a pump and dump scheme is when you are going to illegally hype up a stock that you own and then you're going to drop it. They buy a million dollars worth of Endow at the start of this hike. Now they're going to put out press releases talking about what a great financial investment is. Now Endow is not a known cryptocurrency. Um, they're going to try to fluff it up a little bit. So what is the point of like bragging about buying $1 million in crypto? Well, go back to like our mining scam example and how simply a company finding a gold mine. Think of how appealing that was to its investors, to um, Briex's investors. It's meant to be flashy. It's meant to show how financially well off InvestView is. I mentioned that their press releases were pretty terrible, that they would say some pretty outlandish stuff, but then they would go and protect themselves with this disclaimer. This was one of the best examples I could find of it and did fit so perfectly in this moment as we are talking about them as a stock. I'm going to read this out loud and then we're just going to dissect it together because there is a lot of word association they're trying to do in this press release. This decision came when institutional adoption of Bitcoin is at its peak and many corporations such as Tesla and InvestView have added Bitcoin to their balance sheet. We bought both Bitcoin and Endow, adding it to our treasury balance sheet because we are confident that both these cryptocurrencies will provide our company more flexibility to further diversify and maximize returns on our cash. So what is it that they're trying to do here? One, they are trying to position themselves as being the same financial risk taker as Tesla. And Tesla is a household name. People recognize Tesla as being a successful company, no matter what you think of the products or no matter what you think about Elon Musk. He is revered by so many as a smart businessman. Tesla is also has a huge cult following. So there is no relationship between Tesla and InvestView at all. 
they have no similarities in their stock. Tesla is a high value stock that is traded on NASDAQ and InvestView is a penny stock traded on some unregulated decentralized market. They have no relationship at all. But in order to create this association between Tesla and InvestView, they're going to compare Tesla's acquisition of Bitcoin currency to their own investments. So in the first paragraph, they say many corporations such as Tesla and InvestView have added Bitcoin to their balance sheet because a smart company like Tesla is making that investment in Bitcoin. InvestView must also be a very smart financial company. After all, they're adding Bitcoin as well. The following sentence says, we bought both Bitcoin and Endow, adding it to our treasury balance sheet because we are confident that both of these cryptocurrencies will provide our company more flexibility, blah, blah, blah. And there's like that word association again. They want you to think of Bitcoin and Endow as being great investments. Bitcoin, like Tesla, is like a household name. Everyone talks about Bitcoin. Everyone understands that Bitcoin has made people good money. Everyone understands that Bitcoin has high value. There is no relationship between Bitcoin and Endow at all. Tesla hasn't invested in Endow. They probably couldn't find any reputable company that had also invested in Endow to, uh, you know, compare themselves to. I'm just going to go ahead and add the current value of Bitcoin and the current value of Endow just so you can see how incredibly silly that is. Also worth pointing out is a forward-looking statement that says they are confident that both of these cryptocurrencies will provide our company more flexibility to further diversify and maximize returns on our cash. That is forward-looking, but of course they can just say that because they have saved their butt by putting that disclaimer. The increase in value of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Endow, and others have created significant interest from individuals and institutions alike, said Joe Camerata, InvestView CEO. And as a reminder, uh, Joe Camerata is no longer the CEO um, because, yeah. It's just more word association. Bitcoin, Ethereum are two very popular cryptocurrencies and, and DAO is just thrown into that list. This last paragraph was like the most insane. I won't read all of it, but it says, although cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies are pretty much in their infancy, we see certain cryptocurrencies and blockchains such as Bitcoin and, and DAO having the potential to become the greatest technological advances since the internet. What? You can't just say that. It's like just a statement with nothing backing it up. It's like this word association, Bitcoin, Endow, Bitcoin, Endow, Bitcoin, Endow. They want you to hear Endow and think Bitcoin. They want you to think of Endow every time you hear Bitcoin. And there is no relation at all. Something else that was going on around this time was the end of their fiscal year, the end of their fourth quarter, and that will have ended March 31st, 2021. The fact that this Endow investment came around the end of their fourth quarter, it may have been to save face so that they appear... Um, again, financially stable for their shareholders. The fourth quarter ended on March 31st, and it looks like they boasted increases of 53% and 290% respectively over the same year ago periods, which is kind of actually alarming. I mean, like if $18 million put you at 291% above the year prior, I don't think any of us have to do the math to know that they were not looking so great the year prior. So now we have InvestView really talking up their stock, putting out these press releases, not technically promoting their stock, but sharing how well they're doing. And at the same time, we have some videos popping up on YouTube, encouraging people to invest in INVU. InvestView reports its new record $1.88 million month Bitcoin mining revenue. That's pretty cool, right? Fast forward to February 2nd, InvestView reports new record $2.77 million month in Bitcoin mining revenue. So that's two months in a row. 
March 15th, Investview reports highest monthly gross revenue in company's history. You see what I'm getting at? And then so now fast forward to April 1st, 2021, Investview reports new record $3.1 million for the month of April in Bitcoin mining revenue and completed its strategic technology migration project, providing significant improvements to gross margins. So this is bullish in you know multiple areas. They, you know, they finished something that they set out to do. So that's like, okay, this company can execute on their plans. Um, and this is not, of course, financial advice. Like I said, Investview's price action has been doing really well. It used to be kind of middle of the pack, but now it's, you know, it's really getting ahead of itself. And that's because of these bullish articles and just really strong PR. It's pleased to announce that the company just bought $1 million of NDAU, the world's first adaptive digital currency. So you guys, this stock is rallying because of that news. From lows to highs, this stock is already up over 2 hundred percent right and i want you guys to understand that this stock guys could potentially keep running the reason is because this stock is still so undervalued if this hype keeps growing guys this stock i believe will only go higher potentially reach 10 20 dollars per share the hype is still building all right back in 2017 i invested over thirty thousand dollars in a penny stock called investview as you can see right here investview did over 3.1 million dollars last month in bitcoin mining revenue I got my shares at one penny, just one cent, and look at what it's trading at today. It's trading at over 40 cents with an all-time high of right around 50 cents, and this is just the beginning. You guys do the math. I put in 30K at one cent. Today, it's trading at over 40 cents. I did pretty good on this stock, and again, I think it's just getting started, so go check out Investview. I cannot prove that any of these people are in any INVU scam, but the fact that one of them straight up said this stock has the potential to hit $10 or $20 with absolutely nothing to back it up is insane. The last thing to mention that was happening around this time is that Chad Garner, the president of iGenius, began to... Uh, Promote iGenius and came out with a video called The Truth About iGenius. iGenius is owned by a publicly traded company called Investview. Investview, as a publicly traded company, uh, spends tens of thousands of dollars every single year to bring in outside third party auditing firms and, and attorneys to make sure that they're doing everything the right way. When they you know, file all their public filings, they do it the right way, and that we're reporting to the public, you know, as a publicly traded company, all the right numbers. This is a great strength to us at iGenius because we know that the people in charge, uh, that they are doing things the right way above board. And it's a, it's a major important factor. So, you know, there's some information about there about how possibly we, we maybe don't go about things the right way. Well, go check the filings, go to investu.com and you can see the flow of money. You can see everything right there. Okay, so now we have Chad Garner from iGenius basically inviting people to go check out Investview stock so that you can see how financially well they are doing. This video was published on March 30th. By that point, we had already started to see a spike in the INVU stock. So what am I getting at here? We have Investview putting out press releases that they are making investments that are going to make the company even more profitable. We have people on YouTube either participating in this hype, this intentional hype, or maybe they are honestly just seeing these press releases and hopping on the bandwagon based on these lies. I don't know. They are providing forward-looking statements about this stock. They are implying that it is going to be successful, which in turn tells their viewers to invest. We are also lining it up with the end of their fiscal year, as well as uh, iGenius uh, really starting to promote themselves as this MLM company, and iGenius is going to start to talk about InvestView. So let's look at this stock chart one more time. On March 25th, the INVU stock is going to be worth 12 cents a share. A week later, we're going to have the end of the fiscal year, and by that point, the stock is valued at 41 cents, which is over three times it, its value just a week ago. That is insane. On April 6th, it's going to reach a high of 73 cents. That is, I mean, almost seven times, uh, in between six and seven times the amount it was just two weeks prior. And then just two weeks later, it is going to drop down to 23 cents a share. I think I just said earlier that was like 60%, but I think it's, I think it's 70%. You can see it has never hit $10. It has never hit $20. Yeah, I can only allege that maybe a pump and dump scheme went on around here. Certainly some red flags in terms of INVU being on the stock market. I want to move on and talk about InvestView's MLM businesses. This, of course, will include iGenius, but it's also going to include the two names that iGenius went by before it went by iGenius. So that's going to be Wealth Generators and Kuvera, Kuvera Global, 
whatever. Before we start talking about them, I do just want to recap a little bit of my initial theory from the last video. In my initial theory, I thought, well, an MLM would be the perfect vessel to run a pump and dump scheme. Some of the ways I thought this was possible was uh, the use of an AI that makes investments for the people in iGenius. Because in my head, an unregulated AI could just invest in whatever the company that owned it wants you to invest in. We do see a lot of influencers running pump and dump schemes alongside crypto platforms and stuff. To me, that felt like a one-shot deal. And I had said like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Whereas people in MLMs are very hesitant to admit failure. So even if they lost money with a crypto investment, they're not going to talk about it. Having these people in MLMs as well means that you are going to get free promotion to promote a certain coin or investment. And, and that's free of cost. You don't have to pay an influencer like Logan Paul to promote it for you. And in terms of WFAB, we know that their audience is subject to MLM schemes. They may get suckered into something like a pump and dump. And because an MLM hun will not admit failure, they are probably just going to continue to run similar schemes on a cycle with these huns. So then I pulled up that Reddit post that talked about iGenius potentially being an exit scam. And this is really where I started when I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this theory I had. Now it's been a couple of weeks since I sort of uploaded that theory and now I'm here and I, you know, I've spent time looking into InvestView. I do truly believe that it is both an exit scam and that they are running pump and dump schemes, Ponzi schemes, pyramid schemes, allegedly. I don't know if I have to keep saying allegedly, but yeah. I did want to take a moment to thank a couple of people for this particular portion of this video. The first person is going to be a source that reached out to me after I uploaded that last video. She is someone that has left iGenius a couple of months ago. She did send me some voice notes about her time in iGenius. I personally do not feel comfortable playing them out loud because I do want to protect her. I just truly don't know what lengths iGenius or InvestView will do to protect their reputation. That being said, I did transcribe her voice notes. I do have like a screenshot that I'll share from her. A lot of what I was looking up and thinking really aligned with some of the stuff that she shared with me. I do also want to thank the blog behind MLM. They are an anti-MLM blog that's sort of shares news going on within MLMs and sort of shares like the shady things they're picking up on MLMs in the news. If it wasn't for that blog, I just would not have a timeline of events. They were, again, very helpful at creating that timeline. And a lot of these brands and companies and uh, details about their compensation plan, I would not have if it wasn't for this blog being so thorough. On that note too, I do want to say that this isn't just like my theory. There are lots of people on the internet sharing their experience experiences on Reddit, on YouTube, in, in personal blogs. I just don't want anyone to think that I'm necessarily the one blowing the whistle. This is going to be a collective effort amongst like myself and anyone else who has shared their experiences with this company. One of the definitions that I do want to elaborate on because I don't think I did a very good job in my first video is uh, what an exit scam is. An exit scam is a confidence trick. So think con artist, con man. In this confidence trick, you gain someone's trust and this trust allows you to run the scam a little bit longer. It lets the scam go unnoticed a little bit longer. After you've gained that trust, you stop supplying the services that this person is paying for. So basically this person continues to pay for services that they are no longer getting. As the services get pulled away, the company sort of disintegrates and Either they go away altogether or in the case of InvestView, maybe they come back and rebrand as a different MLM. I don't know. This is just me with a theory. I don't know. The two MLM brands that they had prior to iGenius were very short-lived. Basically, InvestView has had three different names for the same MLM within four years. The latest, of course, being iGenius, which was named in January of 2021. And that's really what is going to raise suspicions that potentially this is an exit scam. InvestView's first MLM was Wealth Generators. Wealth Generators was formed in 2013. However, InvestView did not buy it until 2017. The acquisition took place on March 31st, 2017, and it wasn't announced, it looks like, until April 4th. I do just want to read a forward 
standard looking statement that they included in this. It says the business combination between InvestView and Wealth Generators is a significant timely transaction that will permit InvestView to meet immediate and long term cash flow needs while establishing new and meaningful revenue streams. I just like to point out examples where they provide these forward looking statements and not only does nothing back it up, but there's no repercussions if it doesn't turn out the way that they say it's going to turn out. Because Wealth Generators was so shortly lived, there's not a whole lot of information about it. Like iGenius, there was an AI portion to help you invest in things automatically. It was not crypto related though, it was Forex. This AI was called Rise AI. It was not InvestView's tool, it was a company called Hodo Global's tool. Prior to InvestView buying wealth generators, it did already have a bad reputation. Columbia's version of the SEC referred to it as a pyramid scheme. A website called Valforex referred to wealth generators as a complex scam. Some of the red flags they saw within wealth generators is that it is an unlicensed investment advisor and broker who has no business offering services to members of the public. They go on to say that wealthgenerators.com admits that they are not registered with any government governing body and that their service is risky. The other red flag that they noticed was the fact that they are supposedly good at earning money, but why are they asking for help? They wrote that the website is making unverified claims and soliciting money from randoms on the internet. The question is, if they are this good at making money, why don't they just do it without involving other people? We don't believe that millionaires will go out of their way to ask or beg people to join their movement. Unfortunately, that's what Wealth Generators is doing. So how am I interpreting these red flags? Well, one, it's an MLM. That's going to be the first red flag right off the bat. The other red flag is the AI portion to it. Basically, people are handing over their money to this AI, sometimes providing personal financial information to that AI, and that AI is just supposed to invest the money for you. Also, it's super unregulated and decentralized. Yeah. My other concern with wealth generators was that they partnered with these third party tools. So these weren't tools owned by InvestView. They weren't owned by wealth generators. By them not actually owning these tools, they are able to distance themselves from any of the losses that investors may incur while participating in wealth generators. We will see an example of that in Kuvera. Speaking of Kuvera, you might be asking yourself, how did wealth generators end and Kuvera start? On February 28th, 2018, wealth generators filed a name change to become Kuvera Global. Two things stand out to me that happened around this time. Just a couple of months prior, they filed a plan for recapitalization. So this occurred on December 20th, 2017. I'm going to be honest here and say that I do not understand recapitalization. The way that a company comes up with a recapitalization plan is well above my scope of knowledge for sure. But from a quick Google search that any of us could do, it's easy to see that recapitalization, just like a reverse stock split, is a sign of distress. So while I may not understand it completely, the reasons that a company might do this I do understand, and all of those things are bad. So some of the reasons that a company might do this is maybe their shares have fallen in price and they want to stabilize their share price and prevent it from falling any further. They might do it to reduce financial obligations or debt. They might do it to minimize taxes. They might do it to avoid bankruptcy. They also might do it to protect their investors so that their investors have an exit plan. InvestView would file this on December 20th of 2017, and they would end the fiscal year of 2017 with a net loss of $7.1 million for the fourth quarter. But perhaps the most obvious event that may have led to the fall of wealth generators was a subpoena they received in February of 2018. In February 2018, wealth generators along with seven other companies would receive orders from CFTC to register their businesses correctly. According to the order, wealth generators along with those other companies were offering Forex and binary options to retail investors located in the United States and they were not registered to do so. And to no one's surprise, by the end of the month, InvestView had already filed a name change from Wealth Generators to Kuvera. So I think it's very possible that InvestView and Wealth Generators saw exactly where this was heading and 
began the name change immediately. We're going to talk about what the result from that order of the CFTC was, um, but we're going to talk about it while we talk about Kuvera. On March 1st, 2018, they are going to announce this name change. And uh, this is going to be less than a year after they acquired Wealth Generators. I think Kuvera Global is going to provide the best example of the way InvestView and iGenius run their businesses and and just how they do these things. I want you all to brace yourselves because I feel like this portion is going to come with a lot of information and this might be the most difficult portion for me to explain simply because there's going to be a lot of scams running alongside one another. So I'm going to do my best to make it easy to follow. As we go to talk about Kuvera, I really want you to understand what it is they're doing and why they are using third-party tools instead of using services that they have engineered and concocted for people within their MLMs. InvestView is all about avoiding any sort of government intervention. It's all about remaining unregulated so that they can run as many scams as they want, allegedly. One thing that iGenius does that Wealth Generators did and Kuvera did is that they avoid filing with the SEC, which is, you know, that order that they received. They are going to avoid filing with the SEC by referring to themselves as a financial news source, that they are just providing news and information to people in their MLMs. So because they are not actually providing the services and the services aren't theirs, if they use their own tools and tools that they've engineered, they would have to file as a financial advisor with the SEC. And if they filed as an SEC, well, that would protect any investors that have used any of their tools, meaning investors could get their money back. Investors are not protected by investments made within IG genius because iGenius is not a financial advisor. And this is why I am encouraging anyone who is a part of iGenius or has made investments with, uh, you know, iGenius sort of guiding them, you need to pull out. They are not about making you money. They are all about running as many scams as they possibly can at once. Okay. The other thing is like by not using their tools, obviously they don't have to register, but also it removes liability from them and they can distance themselves from the tool that may have provided distress or debt for some of its investors. This is all leading somewhere, I promise you. What are we looking at here? This is Westman Technology Services. This is an agreement or a contract between InvestView, Kuvera, and Westman Technology Services. Westman is going to provide uh, crypto mining services for InvestView. The director of Westman Technologies, um, its owner and founder is Travis Bott, uh, just a name to note as I continue on. Westman is going to take money from people who want to utilize their services and they are going to mine for Bitcoin for them. If you pay for this service, you will get a portion of whatever Westman Technologies gets out of cryptocurrency, whatever they end up mining for that month. Behind MLM.com did post this blog about these services about a month after they had started offering them. Through Kuvera Wealth, Kuvera Global continues to offer cryptocurrency mining contracts. So remember all those scams I can't keep up with? Wealth Generators also had crypto mining contracts. I, again, I just, too many scams to follow. I couldn't do it, but we will talk about this one. Kuvera offers state-of-the-art mining leases of various hash rates. If you want a way to make money in the crypto industry with a set it and forget it program, mining is your answer. Get deposits in your account weekly. Here I go, about to reiterate myself again and again and again. What they are saying is that they are not going to provide this service because if they were to provide this service, again, they become financial advisors and then they have to file with the SEC. So what they are saying is that they have contracts in their hands. This is information. This is education. If anyone would like a contract, Kuvera will hook you up with a contract. Kuvera is simply providing contracts. They are not providing the services. At the beginning of October 2018, this is where we're going to start to see it all sort of collapse. It was at this time that Kuvera stopped paying out the mining contracts for those that were utilizing Westman. 
At the time when they stopped paying out these contracts, they claimed it was because Ethereum had declined in value and that they really wanted to protect the mining partners who were invested in it. They basically said that the value of Ethereum was too low and that the costs to mine for it were way too costly. So to protect the mining partners, they were going to cease operations. But what was even shadier than them not paying out these mining contracts was that they also stopped allowing withdrawals. So if you have money invested anywhere, you could not pull it out. And they didn't really have a reason for this. They just kind of threw it in there and they said that payouts would resume once the whole mining situation was figured out. Behind MLM made a really good point on this saying, the earnings Kuvera global affiliates have already earned in their back office should be withdrawable. And absolutely, like if you've earned it, you should be able to pull it out. It's going to get worse in a second, but I want to take you back to wealth generators for a second. And I want to talk about that order we talked about with the CFTC. On September 14th, 2018, so this is just going to be a couple of weeks prior to Kuvera stopping payments and withdrawals, the CFTC is going to give wealth generators and Kuvera the final subpoena and the final order to essentially pay out $150,000 as a fine for not filing their company properly. In one of their quarterly SEC filings, they write a little excerpt about it saying in February 2018, we received a subpoena from the United States Commodity Futures Trading Commissions. We complied with the terms of the subpoena, negotiated a resolution of this matter with the CFTC staff, and a final order was issued on September 14th, 2018. Under the order, we are not admitting or denying any of the allegations. We will pay a fine of $150,000 and have agreed not to act as an unregistered commodities trading advisor in the future. As of December 31st, 2018, we have paid $60,000 to CFTC and the remaining unpaid balance has been included in accounts payable and accrued liabilities on our consolidated balance sheet. And I do find it a little bit interesting that this big, bad financial company called InvestView couldn't shell out $150,000 for a fine. They couldn't even get 50% of it paid off by the end of the year. Is that a sign of financial distress? I don't know. Back to Guevara, not paying out contracts for people that are using Westman Technologies. So time elapses and Kuvera sends communication that they have been trying to reinstate mining services, but they just can't find the right time. They say that they have been communicating with the hosting provider in, in hopes that they can come to a resolution with this and that they are doing their due diligence to bring back the mining service and essentially open withdrawals and, and payments back up. They claim that they're doing all this so that they don't resume mining services only to have to shut them back off again. I'm going to try to organize this in like an easy to understand timeline. So on February 28th, 2018, InvestView filed a name change from Wealth Generators to Kuvera. This is going to be around the same time that they were issued an order from the CFTC. On May 1st, 2018, Kuvera and Westman Technologies go into a contract agreement together so that... Westman is going to provide mining services for people in Kuvera. As a reminder, Westman Technologies is owned by Travis Bott. In September of 2018, Kuvera Global, which had been formerly known as Wealth Generators, receives its final subpoena from the CFTC to settle for $150,000. At the beginning of October 2018 is when Kuvera announces they are going to stop mining services and block out payments and stop withdrawals. So on May 15th, 2019, this is when that communication came through that they were were trying to negotiate with Westman to start mining services again once it was safe to do so. That means seven months had gone by and services had not remained and people still could not get their money out of Kuvera. So then something happened. On December 10th, three people are going to be arrested for a 722 million crypto Ponzi scheme. The Ponzi scheme was run under a company called BitClub Network, and one of the men arrested was a man by the name of Silvu Balouche. I know I didn't say that right. I just finished Sopranos, so we'll call him Sil. After his arrest, Kuvera issues another statement. This one reads, we have learned through news headlines that the mining service provider that Westman LLC contracted with in Romania, Silvu Catalan Belush, has been arrested in connection with the BitClub Network indictment. So what was going on? 
Kuvera had signed a contract with Westman to utilize Westman's mining services. Westman's mining services were hosted in Romania by SIL through a company called BitClub Network. BitClub Network was a Ponzi scheme, meaning that there was no mining operation going on whatsoever. There was no mining happening. So how does Kuvera explain this to people that are in Kuvera? In that same communication where Kuvera talks about the arrest, they go on to say, we have sent formal communication from our attorneys to Westman LLC's attorney to provide us the status of the mining hardware of our customers. We have not yet received any answers from Westman LLC or its attorneys. Kuvera has been diligent in trying to do what is best for our members who have entered into hosting agreements with Westman LLC for their mining equipment. We are exploring all options and will provide updates as soon as we have them. In summary, your hosting agreement is with Westman LLC. Do you see where they're going with this? Like, do you see? Westman LLC contracted with a mining service provider in Romania, Silvu Catalan Belush. Still has been arrested in connection with the BitClub network indictment. We sent a formal communication to Westman LLC to provide us the status of the mining hardware and have not yet received an answer. We are concerned that Westman LLC may be unable to access the mining equipment and get mining operations turned back on. Okay, but there was no mining operation. Did you forget to mention that? It's a straight up lie. It's a straight up lie. They're pretending that mining operations existed to begin with and they are flat out lying. As the sales provider of hardware and also purchasers and participants in the mining, we are exploring a variety of options to get some sort of remuneration for the hardware. We will provide updates as soon as we have them. Do you see how they phrased all of this, right? Are we seeing how they phrased it? Despite the fact that Kuvera basically handed their consultants this contract, practically put the pen in their hand to get them to sign and invest, Kuvera that was acting like a liaison and paying out people's investments from this mining contract, and Kuvera who went into a contractual agreement with Westman, they're like, oh, we don't know her. They are reiterating that their hosting agreement is with Westman, not Kuvera, so there's only so much Kuvera can do, and as they have said, they've done their due diligence. They say we are exploring a variety of options to get some sort of remuneration for the hardware. Basically, they're saying we're looking to get our money back too. Like we we lost out too. So despite the fact that Kuvera connected their distributors with this Ponzi scheme, they refused to take accountability for it. As far as where that money went, I don't know. Investors didn't get their money back and services never resumed. On July 10th, 2020, Sill pled guilty to his part in the Ponzi scheme. And as far as Travis Bott of Westman Technologies goes, he went on to promote what appears to be another scam called Onyx, but uh, I just, I, I stopped there. So what happened to Kuvera after that? There's not a whole lot about Kuvera after this whole incident. There does appear to be a similar Ponzi scheme running alongside it called Apex for time's sake. I just had to cut it out. But my guess is that the silence was intentional. Between the Ponzi schemes, the CFTC filings, between people not getting money, their distributors obviously no longer trusted them and you can't run a con if people don't trust you. My guess is that they wanted the smoke to die down before coming back as iGenius. On January 11th, 2021, InvestView would file a name change for Kuvera Global to become iGenius. This would come one year after the whole BitClub network scam. In their press release for iGenius, they refer to iGenius as being a new brand, despite the fact that it is simply the same brand under a new name. They will refer to it as a rebrand in the article, but they will not mention Kuvera whatsoever. They will refer to it as InvestView's worldwide distribution subsidiary. Chad Garner is the president of iGenius, but he has been with InvestView's MLMs for quite some time. He was the president of Kuvera Global, but he was also the VP of sales operations with Wealth Generators. So same leadership, red flags, red flags, red flags. If you watch the iGenius compliance call uh, where Savannah Marie reacted or anyone else, Chad Garner is the face of that call. I'm going to go ahead and link Savannah Marie's video at the bottom, but I do just want to share a quick portion of that call. Before I jump into that, there is one really important thing 
that I did want to address. Some, as always, some misinformation put out there by the world of the internet and, and the, the YouTubers and whatever else. You know, there was a subpoena that was sent to InvestView. Um, it happens, right? I want to make sure everybody understands that, you know, businesses and companies all over the world, uh, and, and especially here in the United States, you know, they get inquiries from, you know, the regulatory bodies. And so there, there, there was sent. We published it in our public filings. Um, and, you know, we're in the process of providing all the information to the SEC. Savannah's face really does say it all. He's minimizing everything. He is calling it fake news, which... I mean, they did get a subpoena and they did have to pay a fine. He's also trying to minimize it by saying, oh, these things just happen. They really don't. The compliance call that Savannah Marie reacted to was, uh, I believe, like a Zoom call with WFAB, if I'm not mistaken. You can see the official video for compliance on iGenius's YouTube. So I am going to play a couple moments from it. Uh, so first, it's very important to understand that iGenius is classified as a publisher of financial news and information and therefore is exempt from registration with the SEC. So guys, we provide financial research and information to the public, but that information is completely at the discretion of the individual as to whether or not they will use it or what they will do with that information. The, the way that we provide that information is definitely different than advice because we are providing that inf information in a uniform way. It's distributed to all people at the same time. It's not customized. It's not catered to a specific individual. And therefore, it is not advice and should never be construed as advice, financial advice or anything uh, of that sort. And that's why we are not, uh, you know, registered with the SEC from a standpoint of, of, you know, being financial advisors. I already talked about this, so I won't ramble on it any further. But there it is again, this idea that iGenius is simply a provider of financial news and therefore they cannot be held liable if you make a bad decision based on the news that they present, despite the fact that they pretty much hand you these contracts with their third-party partners. <laughs> Just one other portion that I wanted to play because I feel like it connects with my last video. Basically, you know, insinuating that the system will do the work for you. Even if you don't say the words, the system will do the work for you, but implying that, you know, that the the program, the products sell themselves and you don't really have to do anything. You literally are just kind of along for the ride. That is absolutely false. It's inaccurate. That's really all I wanted to share in terms of compliance. The uh, Yeah. iGenius is not offering really anything different than its past two MLMs. It's really just operating under a different name. I'm really just trying to talk through some red flags and maybe talk about where I think this is headed. I mentioned that I am going to be talking about the relationship between Endotech and iGenius. So this is a video that was uploaded to the Game Changers YouTube about that partnership. That again, we are, uh, we, we create education. So like when our members click on that link and go over to Endotech, we don't get paid. Um, I mean, the reason I bring this up is because, uh, you know, in one of the articles out there, you know, there was this whole big thing made about like, well, we aren't reporting our, you know, our revenue from Endotech. We aren't, we aren't reporting the assets under management that we are managing at Endotech. And it's like, well, of course we're not because number one, we don't even get a, a finder's fee. We, we, we negotiated uh, a deal where we pushed all the benefit for our users. We didn't even, we, the, the company doesn't get the kickback or any sort of thing. We just basically have a link there and an agreement in place that allows our members to get, you know, a, 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 their account created a lower minimum, um, get a, an account created and, and have that software working for them, and we make nothing on it. So when it comes to reporting, uh, you know, to the SEC, <laughs> we have, you know, we pay attorneys and we have a whole team of people out of SU that they do things the right way. I just, I, I almost found out like humorous that like the point was being made that somehow we're, we're like, you know, um, we've pulled the wool over the eyes of the SEC and we have all this revenue that we're not, we're not reporting from, from uh, Endotech. Well, like, Endotech's a partnership. They're a third-party company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is absolutely no way that iGenius or InvestView isn't getting the kickback from their partnership with Endotech. Absolutely no way. I found it weird that this was even brought up in any conversation whatsoever. You know, it's kind of like in that last video where he brought up the subpoena. Like, why are you even bringing this stuff up? It's like he's doing this out of panic. Like he's so scared someone's going to bring it up. Riddle me this. When you become an affiliate with iGenius, you are presented two investment opportunities. One is going to be in Dow, which is that cryptocurrency that I talked about earlier and I'll, I'll talk about later on. The other is crypto. So Elite, which is a tool from Endotech, why would that be an investment opportunity available? Why would you offer that without getting a kickback? Hmm? And I, I just want to say, because I don't think I've said this yet, you do not need any of this or any company like this to trade. If you go to the app store, you can pick up a ton of free trading apps. You don't need 
any of this, okay? It does not feel right that iGenius, like the MLMs before it, has not filed with the SEC, especially when they are clearly getting a cut of the investments made into endotech, and especially because we have seen a history of them partnering with these terrible third parties. That being said, on November 12th, I believe this was published, this is a quarterly review for the quarter ending September 30th, 2021. So according to this, they are admitting that they have recently received a subpoena from the SEC, basically saying that they are out of compliance. They are not admitting to any fault, and uh, I suppose we, we don't know what is going on. But if this plays out the way that we saw it play out with wealth generators, they have received this subpoena. It, it could result in the changing of the MLM brand again once they receive that final SEC notice. If you are in iGenius, I truly believe that time is of the essence. If iGenius is already getting subpoenaed by the SEC, it means that they are already on that radar. And I believe we are going to see a rebrand sooner rather than later. Editing Turd Girl 1 here, there is one more article I wanted to insert in this moment because I think it fits really good here. I found this article after the fact, but it talks about how InvestView approved a future reverse stock split. I just talked about how InvestView has received another subpoena. So the first was when they had wealth generators and it was not filed correctly. And now we have a second subpoena, which is saying they are out of compliance, although you know we don't quite know the details around that yet. But that second subpoena to me was like the first indication that we are about to see a rebranding, a move, an exit, something of that sort. This to me is another sign that we may see that happening as well. We talked about a reverse stock split when Global Investor Services wanted to change its name to become InvestView. We also talked about how a reverse stock split is a sign of distress. So in this press release, they are going to talk about the reason they are approving a future reverse stock split. To me, it's all one giant lie and I will explain it. I'm going to go ahead and read this highlighted part. It says, InvestView's majority shareholders have agreed to give the board the ability to do up to a one for 20 reverse split to be utilized in connection with an uplist to the NASDAQ over the next year. The company's strong fundamental sales and earnings performance qualifies the company for a NASDAQ uplist and this vote allows this to happen depending on NASDAQ's determination and board of directors approval. So they are saying that they are going to do this reverse stock split in order to qualify for NASDAQ. So InvestView has been traded on OTC markets, which are decentralized, they are unregulated, and now they want to move to NASDAQ, which is a centralized market. I think that this is InvestView's way of disguising the fact that a reverse stock split is a bad thing. They are presenting this forward-looking statement that this reverse stock split will allow them to be put on NASDAQ over the next year. Well, spoiler alert, the year is almost up and they are still not on NASDAQ. I also mentioned that there were a couple of requirements stocks had to have in order to be on NASDAQ. So one was that each share would have to have a minimum value. And the last, which I don't think I mentioned, is that there needs to be a certain amount of outstanding shares available to the public. I want to make this quick and I don't want to bore you with the math. So from a surface level, if I look at their market capital, if I look at the outstanding shares, and if I look at what that reverse stock split would look like, it actually does does appear, again, from the surface level, that InvestView could meet those minimum requirements. But there's three reasons that I think this press release was one giant lie to disguise their finances. The first I already said, and it's that the year ends within a month and they are not on NASDAQ yet. So I just, I don't know. I don't think it's happening. If it happens within the next month, I would be very, very surprised. The second reason is that InvestView does everything in its power to avoid being regulated, to avoid any sort of government intervention, to avoid anything that would protect its investors. Being on NASDAQ would require it to be on a centralized market that would require some sort of audit, that would require some sort of deeper look into InvestView, and I don't think that that's a risk InvestView is going to take. And the final reason is that I don't think they actually qualify for NASDAQ based on one other requirement that I hadn't talked about. If you want to be on NASDAQ, none of your previous three fiscal years could have ended with a net loss. 
According to one of their net filings, they had a net loss of $21 million for the year ended March 31st, 2020. That is within three years, so they cannot be on NASDAQ, at least not within the time frame that they said they were going to be on NASDAQ. So yeah, I think that they have no intention of being on NASDAQ. I think that this was all one giant lie to disguise the fact that they are not doing well financially. I did want to go ahead and read some of the stuff that was sent to me by my source who recently left iGenius. Again, I do want to keep her anonymous. Uh, I guess I will call her, I'm going to go ahead and refer to her as Coco. I think that's kind of cute. Coco had actually reached out to me on Instagram after watching my video. She let me know that she had left iGenius just a couple months prior. She said that in terms of my theory, she felt a lot of it was probably spot on. So I want to just read some of her accounts. So she says the fact that they throw InvestView in to try to legitimize their credibility is hilarious. It's completely irrelevant to anything they do. They've lately been mentioning their Better Business Bureau rating as well, but their reviews are actually horrible. Their problem is that they upsell their product like it's some revolutionary, life-changing, game-changing shit. It's nothing more than general information slash education about Forex, stocks, trading, etc. And an added alert system that makes you lose money faster than you can make it. I also lost over 1,200 within three to four months of setting up my AI with Endotech. She says, it's so fucking twisted that people got me into this. I know them personally. That's even the more twisted part. I wasn't expecting that from them. They flat out lied to me about so much. I've been sending emails to compliance almost daily since the video came out because day after day I come across somebody's comment that goes against compliance. I'm like, fuck you. You can't screw people over with your lies. I, I'm going to read some more from Coco, but Coco was brought into iGenius from someone she knew, someone that she considered a friend. And that goes back to this idea of a confidence trick, right? We don't think of it this way, but when you recruit someone, you are conning them. You are using the trust that they have in you to get them to join into a company that you're losing money with because you want to stop the bleeding. You're not going to tell someone that you're recruiting that you're losing money and that you desperately need them because you need to make up this deficit. You're going to lead in with, hey, you're my friend. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. You are using that trust to get them into the same situation that you are currently in. We are also going to talk about what iGenius is doing, um, particularly with CoinZoom. We are going to see how good iGenius and Endotech is at convincing people to hold on to their investments, uh, which prohibits them from taking out their money. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. I had also asked Coco if she thought iGenius was trying to promote investing as the best way to earn money with them or if it was recruiting because I felt like their plan for recruiting was a little bit confusing to me and there was just so much emphasis on investing. She did say in terms of the compensation plan, their main focus from my experience was to recruit people like to do the whole MLM thing. I originally went in this with the intention of like only investing because of the 200 monthly membership or Renewal. They tell people if you want to get rid of that, you can if you recruit four people. If you recruit four people, iGenius will cover the monthly subscription fee. She goes on to say that that's not actually true. What ends up happening is iGenius actually takes that out of your commission. So for example, let's say I sign up four elite members, I get $200 per elite per sign up in commission. And then every time they renew their membership every month, I get $25. That's how that works. So iGenius says if you recruit four people, they will cover your monthly member ship, which is $175. What they actually do is they take away a certain amount of commission and they cover the rest of the cost. They're not covering your commission. They make up the commissions. I could be mistaken here, but I think what she is saying is that they try to make it sound like if you recruit four people, your membership is covered. But what actually happens is any commission you would have made off of those four people is held by iGenius and then they will just pay the rest of your monthly membership. If you were to recruit four people and they renewed their membership, that's $100 a month. You don't get that $100. iGenius keeps it and then they cover that $75 for the rest of your membership. 
Um, she says that they weren't investing to push in any certain amount of stocks, but they were pushing coin zooms a lot and they're pushing a lot of NFTs. I think that they're just trying to sound smart. We love it. We love Coco. If you are, are still here, if you're still watching, leave an encouraging comment for Coco because she also aided in helping uh, get some other people out of iGenius and we love to see that. Because I was elite, because I wanted the bot, I ended up losing money, but I was able to take the rest of my money out without the help from Endotech or anyone. They try to get people who sign up on smaller packages to upgrade, and they're very pushy about it. Like, very pushy. GC, which is Game Changers, they have their own channel on this alert system that they use for Forex, and they have Game Changers Gold Channel, which is basically alerts that are stolen from someone else. They're garbage. They're actual trash. I've lost more money off these alerts than I've made money. And they try to tell people with smaller packages that, well, if you want access to the gold channel, you have to sign up elite. It's like one of their perks. It's a tactic they use to manipulate people to upgrade and register for elite. And when that happens, the recruiter gets a big bonus from iGenius. So that's one thing they really push on people with the small packages. She also says that they really use FOMO as, as a manipulation tactic. Uh, so like fear of missing out. We love Coco. We're going to get back to her. But for now, we need to talk about Endotech. And uh, let's just talk about Endotech. Endotech. 